So, how do we calculate the shape of a conical fretboard? We know that for a conical fretboard, as we move up the neck, the radius of curvature of the fingerboard increases. This diagram shows the basic idea. It only shows the outermost strings because the spacing between them is one of the measurements we need. What we're looking for is a formula that gives us the fingerboard radius at any point between the nut and the bridge. Fortunately, this is quite easy to work out. First, let's redraw the diagram. This is the problem we want to solve. How does the fretboard radius change as we move from the nut to the bridge? To make the reasoning a bit more obvious, we'll take a more familiar situation. Here's a circle. Here's the radius. Here's the diameter. We know that the radius is half the diameter. So if we divide the radius by the diameter, the ratio will always be one half or 0 0.5. Here's a bigger circle, specifically 1.5 times bigger. Here's the radius. Here's the diameter. We know that if the diameter increases by a factor of 1.5, the radius increases by a factor of 1.5. In other words, the radius changes in proportion to the diameter. What about guitar necks? When we move on to guitar next, the reasoning is identical. The only thing that changes is that we do the calculation using the spacing between the outermost strings rather than the diameter. And from now on, when I talk about string spacing, I mean the spacing between the outermost strings. Here's the nut of a guitar neck. The spacing between the outermost strings is 43 millimeters. Here's the radius of the fingerboard at the nut. It's 304 millimeters. If we divide the radius by the string spacing, we get a ratio of about 8.2. Here's the bridge. The string spacing between the outermost saddles is 48 millimeters. What's the radius at the bridge? We know that the radius divided by the string spacing is 8.2. By a simple rearrangement, we can say that 8.2 times the string spacing is the radius. In this case, 8.2 times 48 is 394 millimeters. For those of you who are scared of algebra, I apologize for the next slide. But we can combine these last two steps. This is the string spacing at the nut. This is the fingerboard radius at the nut. We're always going to calculate this ratio. Radius at the nut divided by the string spacing at the nut. Here's the string spacing at the bridge. We want to find the radius at the bridge. In order to find the radius of the bridge, we multiply this ratio by the string spacing at the bridge to give us this formula here. However, this is this ratio, so we substitute to give this formula here. In words, it is the fretboard radius at the nut divided by the string spacing at the nut times the string spacing at the bridge gives us the radius at the bridge. We don't want the radius at the bridge. We want the radius at the end of the fretboard.
So we need to find the string spacing at the end of the fretboard. First we'll take an obvious example. What's the fretboard radius at the 12th fret? Here is a neck. That's 12, 24 and a bridge. Here's the nut. Here's the bridge. Here is the radius of curvature at the nut. We know the string spacing at the nut. We know the string spacing at the bridge. We want to find out the string spacing at the 12th fret. The 12th fret is halfway between the nut and the bridge. So the string spacing is halfway between the spacing at the nut and the spacing at the bridge. Let's redraw the diagram. The nut is 37 millimeters. The bridge is 48 millimeters. What's the string spacing halfway between the two? Well, step one, work out the difference between the bridge and the nut string spacing, which is 43 millimeters minus 37 millimeters. Step two, work out where you want to calculate the radius as a fraction of the scale length. That's a little confusing, but it'll become obvious over the next few examples. In this case, we're looking for fret 12, and we know that fret 12 is half of the scale length. So the fraction in this case is 0 0.5. Step 3. Multiply step 1 by step 2. 11 times 0.5 is 5.5 millimeters. So this distance here is 5.5 millimeters bigger than this distance here. Step 4. Add step 3 to the string spacing of the nut. 37 millimeters plus 5.5 millimeters is 42.5 millimeters. So the string spacing of fret 12 is 42.5 millimeters. Finally, step 5. Calculate the fretboard radius of the nut times the string spacing of fret 12 this time divided by the string spacing at the nut. Here's the diagram for the nut. Here is the diagram for fret 12. And you'll recognize this formula from the previous slides. We put in the numbers. The radius at the nut is 304 millimeters. The string spacing at the nut is 37 millimeters. The string spacing at fret 12 is 42.5 millimeters. So the radius at fret 12 is 349.2 millimeters. So we'll call that 349 millimeters. We're going to calculate the radius of curvature at the 24th fret now. Here's the diagram. Same as last time, but we want this distance here at the 24th fret. We follow the same steps as before. Step one, work out the difference between the bridge and the nut string spacing. 48 minus 37, 11 millimeters. Step two. Work out where you want to calculate the radius as a fraction of the scale length. In this case, we know fret 24 is 3 quarters of the scale length, so the fraction is 0.75. Step 3. Multiply step 1 by step 2. 11 millimeters times 0.75 is 8.25 millimeters, so this is 8.25 millimeters wider than this. Step 4. Add step 3 to the string spacing of the nut. 37mm plus 8.25mm, 45.25mm. And then finally, step 5. 
calculate the fretboard radius of the nut divided by the string spacing of the nut times the string spacing at fret 24. Here's the diagram. Here's the nut as before. Now we've got the string spacing at fret 24, not at fret 12. We put the numbers into this equation. 304 divided by 37 times 42.5 is 371.8 millimeters. So the radius of the fingerboard at fret 24 is 372 millimeters. Now let's make things more awkward. Suppose we've got an acoustic guitar with only 20 frets. We don't have an exact ratio. It's not 0.5, it's not 0.75. We need to find the fretboard radius at the 20th fret. So we need to find out where the 20th fret is as a fraction of the scale length. With fret 12, it was halfway. With fret 24, it was three quarters of the way. We need to do the same with fret 20. Fortunately, we are going to be making this guitar, so we already know the scale length and the position of the frets. Here's our diagram. It's a different guitar, so the radius at the nut is slightly different. We do the same calculations, same steps. Step 1. Work out the difference between the bridge and nut string spacing, and in this case, it's 53 millimeters at the bridge and 60, 36 millimeters at the nut. The difference between the two is 17 millimeters. Step two. Work out where you want to calculate the radius as a fraction of the scale length. Here's our scale length. It's 644 millimeters. Fret 20, we've already worked out as 441.2 millimeters. Remember, we're making this guitar, we've gone through all these calculations beforehand. In this case, we know that fret 20 is 441.2 millimeters from the nut and the scale length is 644 millimeters. The fraction we're going to use then is 441.2 divided by 644. Step three, multiply step one by step two. Now previously we've worked this out as an actual number. We'll just leave it as the fraction now. Step 1, 17 millimeters, multiplied by step 2, 441.2 divided by 644, which gives me 11.6 millimeters. Step 4, add step 3 to the string spacing at the nut. 36 millimeters plus 11.65 millimeters gives me approximately 47.6 millimeters. So the string spacing at fret 20 is 47.6 millimeters. And then finally, step five, we calculate the fretboard radius at the nut divided by the string spacing at the nut times the string spacing this time at fret. 20. We put the numbers into our equation. 355.6 divided by 36 multiplied by 47.6 gives a radius of curvature at fret 20 of 470.6 millimeters. If you want to calculate the radius of curvature for your own self build guitar, and have a conical fretboard, just follow the same five steps using the dimensions that you've chosen. Be careful not to make any numerical errors. Always double or triple check your calculations. And thank you for watching.